This episode of Digital Photography Cafe is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera, and by Daisy Grip, for a child's smile for a photographer's camera. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe. I'm Trevor Current, your digital marketing guy. And I'm Joseph Christina, your professional photographer. So grab a latte, pull up a chair, and join us as we chat about the art and business of photography. So hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Last week we talked about the new Rebel T4i, security issues with LinkedIn, and copyrights. If you haven't listened to last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it on iTunes, listen in your car through Stitcher Radio, or simply head over to the website, digitalphotographycafe.com, and listen online. So, Joe, we are back. Episode 58. 58. We're here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're here. <laughs> yeah. You're here. I, yeah. I'm, uh, as far as I'm hearing, you're, you weren't feeling too good with that back after. I know we were talking, uh, was it last week or something? You said your back was kind of all messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I had mentioned how I had this pain shooting through my shoulder and my thumb was numb. Well, two and two, <laughs> yeah. two and a half weeks later, it's still numb. I still have that pain. Uh, went to the doctor, put me on some uh, medication, some steroids and, uh, you know, a muscle relaxer and stuff for a week. Yeah. And it did absolutely nothing. That's perfect. Felt exactly the same. So I went back. Um, you know, they, he also said, oh, I should probably go for an MRI. Well, not just one MRI, two MRIs, one on my neck, one on my upper back. Uh, so I don't that's know. That's fun, any right? Guys, All that banging, boom, 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 oh, boom. You're God. like deaf. If, if you guys have never had an MRI done, um, you better not be claustrophobic and you better have a good tolerance for noise. <laughs> right. Uh, that's, that's just not a fun experience. And, uh, you know, and to top it all off, you got to lay flat on your back, like still. You can't move even a little bit. All you can do is breathe normal and swallow normally. Right. You know, so, you know, I first laid down on the table and, you know, putting my left arm down by my side was excruciating. So I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to lay here for 20 minutes without moving, you know? So I was yeah. like, can you do, can I have my arm up a little, up raised a little or whatever? So you put a wedge under my arm and everything. So it was Yeah, they do whatever tolerable. they can, but yeah, it's still uncomfortable. But you're inside the little tube and that's it. It's funny, that's exactly what I predicted, right? Yeah. I said, it's going yeah. to be, it's going to be drugs, muscle relaxers. It's going to be, yeah. um, sir, you need an MRI. And here's your fifteen thousand dollar bill. So uh, two, yeah. I guess I got two out of three, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank God for insurance. So uh, <laughs> yeah, now the next step is off to a specialist and probably some physical therapy. So because <sighs> the MRI was not favorable, I'm, I'm my back is all yeah. screwed up. So and thus we were we were a day late on the show this week because yeah, uh, yeah, There's a lot going on. I mean, you know, Father's Day too. I mean, we got to take time with the family, right? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But nonetheless, we're here. It's done. It's absolutely. Well, as long as you feel better, that's, uh, or at least getting a little bit better. That's all. That's what counts. So now you yeah, I'm not getting any worse. <laughs> That's a plus. So, that's a so, plus. Yeah. It's, it's not any worse. So anyways, let's, let's get into a little bit of news this week. We have, of course, the WWDC and the, God, no iPhone, which actually now, kills us. Right? Disappointment. Yeah, yeah. Very I mean, disappointing. I, it, that was kind of the rumor that they were going to hold off on the iPhone. And, and of course, right. they did. Um, I'm, I'm bummed because I've been waiting. I was really hoping to get a new iPhone this summer. Yeah. Um, speculation is talking more like September, October time frame. So that's what we originally guess, thought. Let's, guess we'll be holding out. Yeah. Um, you know, but they did, um, refresh their MacBook pros, yeah. which is pretty good. And they came out with a new Mac MacBook pro with a retina display, which looks Love that. really nice. I'm glad that I held off. I was going to actually get a new MacBook Pro um, yeah. recently, and I'm like, you know, we're right there at the cusp. We yeah. know that it's, they're going to be changing soon. I'm like, oh, that's why I've been holding off with my 3GS like you. Yeah. I think my my daughter is more pissed than I am. She she like wants my my 3GS, you know, my Apple, the right. iPhone, and uh, and she's not getting it because no. you got to no, wait. Not yet. Not yet. You know, I would love to go for the 4S, but when you're so close and you know no. that the new one is right around the corner, it's yeah. just hard to wait when it's such, you know, it it's such a jump. 
You know? Yeah, so yeah, like, it uh, is. I mean, to go to, like we said before, to go from the 3S to the 4S, yeah. and that's a huge improvement, but to go right. from the 3S to this new iPhone, the, five. the iPhone 5, whatever they're going to call it, is going to be even bigger of a jump, and right. it's going to be that right. much better. And yeah, and it'll really burn me if I <laughs> if I spend the money and get the 4S, and then like a couple right. months later, the right. 5 comes out, and, yeah. Yeah. and I'm with the, the previous generation. Exactly. It's just going to annoy me, you know? And of course, they did the big announcement with the, you know, iOS 6 and Mountain Lion and that whole, you know, the hoopla with that. So they, yep. they had, yep. there was plenty of good stuff. There's like, you know, you couldn't say, oh, there was no reason to go to the show. I tell you what, the MacBook Pro with the Retina display, I'm excited about that. that That's pretty be, hot. Yeah. That should be nice. That yeah, that nice. is a nice machine. Um, the display is beautiful. The resolution be is much higher. Um, so basically, it gives you kind of more visual real estate. Right. Um, you know, it, it is definitely a really nice machine. Um, I don't know that I'm going to get one. I'm just, I don't really use laptops enough. I mean, right. I've got my desktop. We do have a, you know, a MacBook Pro here in the house that I use when, you know, if I'm traveling or whatever. But, sure. um, you know, it's, I don't use it enough and I wouldn't want it as my main machine when, you know, I mean, why, why yeah. have a retina display yeah. laptop when you can, if you're going to end up plugging in a 23 or a 24 inch monitor right. to it anyway yeah see you know? for me um i'm most likely going to get one because i'll bring it on location so if for i'm sure. an art, for art shoots, director it's great. for shooting yeah. tethered it's, it'll be beautiful or even if i don't shoot tethered and i just move stuff over for an art director just to look at some of the sure. stuff that we just shot let's say in the morning yep. and he comes in at the afternoon and be like okay so this is what we got it's it's a lot it's going to be sweet to be able to show them you know something that's on such a high resolution to you know on the laptop so Sure, that's absolutely. kind of exciting i'm 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 excited about the macbook uh, yeah, pro yeah so. it's very cool but so, another thing uh that kind of happened of course this week was that facebook release of quote-unquote facebook for wordpress right the plugin yeah cool new plugin so you know we always yeah. we talk a lot about facebook a lot lately <laughs> we're kind of yeah. sick of talking about them but you know they're the they're the the big player in the digital marketing realm of what we yeah, all absolutely. do and yeah, so a lot of photographers I know are using WordPress to manage their their site. Right. Um, you know, so other people are on live books and, you know, different things like that. That's fine too. Sure. Um, some are still using Flash, um, but we'll forget yeah. those. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Um, if you've but, listened to uh, us for the last year, you're not using Flash any longer. But, yeah. Um, no, right. If, if you are, then you really need to stop. But regardless, we'll yeah. get, that's another show. That's but yeah, this show. Facebook um, app looks really, really cool. There's a lot of stuff that you can do from within your site, right? You know, yeah. off the side as like a little widget, you know, all kinds of, the plugin has a lot of functionality to it. Really it really cool. has a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, individual plugins that are out there kind of all rolled up into one. Right. Um, I think what's probably the most interesting thing about this is it will auto post to Facebook through right. the plugin. That's really so. Cool. You know there there you know are several Facebook apps out there, uh, networked blogs, RSS graffiti, you know other ones that sure. will read RSS feeds and then pull in content into right. a Facebook post and post it on your page. Right. Well, a lot of times you're kind of limited as to what the capabilities of what those offer. Um, with this, you can actually, you know, set it up so it will auto post through the plugin. So when your post goes live, it will auto post it to Facebook, which, you know, it just helps with timing. Yeah, you know? it's it's what we were talking about one sh a couple of shows back about being if, if whenever you can do something in one location and yeah. It, and that location, like ag like as an aggregate, and then sends it out to all the other, you know, social media right. locations. You're doing, you, you're, you know, you're killing multiple birds with one stone. I like the functionality that it has. Like, for example, you can like, you can send, you can subscribe. You know, you can put buttons right. on there to to do these things. Right, right that, in your post, that one you plugin know? can eliminate all those other plugins that you right. may have installed, which is good. I mean, the the fewer Absolutely. plugins that you're running on your WordPress site, really, the better. Right. Um. You know, but that that's really cool. Um, the other thing that's really interesting with this plugin is not only will it auto post information to your own blog or, or excuse me, to your own page, um, you can have it auto post to your private profile as well if you want. Right. It. Um, right. But in the sidebar, in the admin area, you can actually 
mention other pages or mention other Facebook users that you're friends with right. in, in these dialog boxes. And you can put your message in there and it will actually post it to those pages as well. Right. So let's say if we were talking about, um, oh, I don't know, if, if I was talking about Allure Multimedia in, in a blog post, you know, I could put Allure Multimedia's Facebook page in there. Right. And then it would post it, you know, since I like your page, it would post it to your page as to a the timeline. comment. Right. Um, which is really neat. And it would do yeah. the same thing with um, individuals. So it'd be the I, equivalent of at mentioning someone in Twitter. Right. You know, if you want, right. you know, let's say you're saying something now, like you're saying, you're saying something about Allure Multimedia. If you at mentioned me, let's say at Joseph Christina, and you said something nice, whatever right. it is about a, a, some product that I use, and you mentioned the product at also, um, then we both get it. So it's, yeah, it's well, a it's nice not even way. so much you just seeing it, but it actually will get posted to your right fan to the page. page. Right. So anybody that frequents your fan page would then see it. Exactly. Um, you know, and not as many people do that. Not as many people come to your fan page uh, directly. You know, they mostly get your updates through their news stream. But what it does do is so I write and say something nice about you. It gets posted to your fan page. You see it. And then you like it or you comment back on it. Well, that is going to go out through your pages feed into all of your, you friends. know, your, fo your friends, Followers, your fans right. into their news streams. Exactly. So it does have, it does give the ability to um, allow blog posts and such to go viral. You know, yeah. it's the whole viral spreading. And that's, that's really what's important. I think it's a great idea. It's, you know, it's, cool. it's free. Good. You can, uh, you can head over to, um, what is it? Uh, WordPress.org and yep. do a search for, uh, you know, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook plugin. Yep. And, yeah. You can get it right there. Uh, you can find it on the Facebook developer site. Um, you know, right. it's, it's, it's definitely out there. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. We're playing with it right now. So we're going to report back. Yep. as far as um you know how everything's working if there's any problems with it or whatnot so uh, exactly. but it looks cool it looks good anytime that you can like like we always say anytime that you can centralize anything um and then have it go out to all the different social networks this one's obviously just a facebook but to do different things instead yep. of you having to do it saves you time saves you money um that's just that's just it and gives but you more time to actually interact with the community rather than taking right. the time to post to the community right exactly so i tell you what before we go on with any other news let's go ahead and take a quick break from one of our sponsors have you ever tried to photograph a child who was on the move and wouldn't settle down a child who just wouldn't give your camera the time of day no matter what tricks you tried if so we have some great news for you introducing the daisy grip your go-to tool for capturing a child's smile just think of the daisy grip as your third hand just place it into your camera's hot shoe Insert the child's favorite toy or puppet and let the smiles begin. Imagine the storytelling magic that you'll have at your disposal with a ferocious lion or a friendly monster sitting on top of your camera. For the ultimate attention getter, place your smartphone into the Daisy Grip and play the child's favorite cartoon. With the addition of a Daisy Grip bracket, you can free up your hot shoe for a flash or wireless transmitter. Let Daisy Grip put the space above your lens to work for you. Make this indispensable tool your new best friend. Head over to daisygrip.com forward slash DPC to get the listener discount. The Daisy Grip, for a child's smile, for a photographer's camera. Sorry, right, Trevor, we're back. Let me ask you a quick question. How would you like a big fat pipe directly to the internet, like about 300 megs. What does that sound like? That would be awesome, considering <laughs> mine is seven. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That would be mine, fantastic. <laughs> that would be, that'd be hot, right? Yeah. So yeah, so Verizon, they unveil, of course, the Fios, a new Quantum, that's going to be giving you 300 yeah. megabytes. I mean, that's like, you know, a 300 megabit connection, It's that's un heard of that's unbelievable that's nuts but hold on 200 bucks a month yeah i'll yeah. take You're that all day long yeah it's still i mean that is that is so huge i mean that is a huge pipe i'm telling you i had at you know I, i've run a studio for quite some time and we had um a studio build out basically on on our property and i've had a t1 
at the house for many years. And I could tell you back when I had a T1 coming in here, that T1 was about 13 to $1,500 a month. Yep. And for 1.5 megabit. 1.5, <laughs> right? Bi directional, 1.5. Yeah. So <laughs> we're looking at 300. I mean, you, you just, you know, anyways unbelievable so this looks really cool i mean this would yeah. be this would be nice obviously it's not everywhere you can't get it everywhere it's just like uverse and all the rest of the stuff you know yeah that, i mean if you're in the verizon fios you know serving area and right. and this is something you need i mean if you're transferring um large files um you know downloading or uploading uh this is the way to go oh yeah. i mean if you're you know if many people many photographers if you're in the fios area and you've got you know, even if you have any of their plans, I mean, even their their basic plan is, you know, what like some five if, or fifteen or something, yeah, crazy thing like that. Matter of fact, Trevor, I mean, I'm I'm looking at their plans right now, and you know what? Their lowest plan is a three meg plan, mm -hmm. but listen to this with one meg up, my right. and that is fifty four ninety nine. Okay, yeah, I right now for my six meg and. What is it? Not even uh, like uh, three. What is it? Three hundred. So four hundred. It? Like it's not even five. Let's let's call it five twelve. It's not five twelve. <laughs> the five twelve up that they give us that yeah. that is like about that. So yeah. I mean, for sixty four bucks, you end up with five meg up, which is you know ten times the amount that I have right now for basically about the same price and fifteen megs down in comparison to six that I have now. So yeah, yeah if you can if yeah. you can get on this FIO stuff. I mean, this is just, this Definitely Verizon's got it, it down. I, I'm not sure what their bandwidth cap limitations are. Right, right, um, sure. You know what, all of, I'm finding a lot of the, the networks now are capping. Um, there's just sure. too much um, large video streaming that's going on. Right. Um, I, I just I just actually upgraded my phone service here at the, uh, at the office. Yeah, from, you went VoIP, right? You're all, yeah, you're all yeah, voice the, over IP now. Yeah, my cable company actually has been offering phone service for quite some time. And, you know, it works out. It's like a $25 a month savings for me to go VoIP. Right. And, you know, and it's not Vonage or it's not Skype per se or, or any of the other, um, you know, Magic Jack or right, any of right, those right, things, right. you know. I mean, it's right. actually through my cable company. They're, I mean, I could drive to their office and say, hey, I've got a problem, you know. Right. So I mean, that that really was the deciding factor for me. I mean, the amount of money that I was paying each month to my phone company for nothing. I mean, I had no long distance calling. I had nothing. I had the basic plan. Most of my calling I do either, you know, through Skype or with my cell phone. Right. You know, so now, I mean, forget it. We use the use the VoIP line. I mean, yeah, you can awesome. use have the convenience of your regular handset. And and call anywhere in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico. I mean, wherever, yeah. <laughs> more places it's, than where I'll ever call. It's a no. Know? It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. A no -brainer. Yeah, you know what? Also, um, I heard this week was Nokia. They came out with their <laughs> their new phone, right, with a big fat megapixel amount, forty one megapixels on their phone, and the phone is going to be seven hundred bucks. I'm like, Jeez. it's a medium format phone. <laughs> That's what it seems like, right? It's got to look like hell, though. I mean, I can't. What are you going to, I mean, 41 megapixels on a phone? The size How of big a is the, you know, what is the size of the, you know, the sensor? It's like, uh, I don't even know. Yeah, the is sensor the is probably head? not even as big as your pinky nail. And they're oh my God, no. 41 megapixels on it. I mean, oh, yeah. It's going to look crazy. like crap. Yeah. But uh, I, that, I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, what else was interesting is, you know, in the news this week, that's all it's been is Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft and their tablet, right? And the Windows 8 and the whole, you know, that whole entire thing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm like, geez, these people, they're, I don't know, they're they are always like a day late, a dollar short. I saw the a report, it said, you know, nearly a third of the US internet users already own tablets. So 33% yep. of everyone already has a tablet that are already on the internet. So this, right. is, this is what Microsoft does, you know, they, they go down these roads that know are, lucrative roads but they're always like so late with it right it's, late to it the just, game yeah yeah always. yeah i mean you know no doubt we're we're definitely apple fans but sure, sure. you know uh, you know i mean i can take you know microsoft for what they are i mean uh, they still have the dominant operating system in the world sure you know um they've got a great gaming console i mean xbox is is fantastic i mean it's, microsoft's not all bad they're not all evil sure. i mean we're, we're definitely no, no. not from that camp 
Um, but yeah, no, I do agree. I mean, they they are more following the pack rather than leading it. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't necessarily call them um, inventors. Right. Um, and innovation is, in some cases, is even a stretch. I mean, I, I think a lot of times they take what has already proved to be successful and adapt it to their operating systems and maybe make some hardware tweaks or what have you. But right. um, definitely I don't call them, you know, inventors by any. Yeah. I think I, the biggest, the invention that I would say the biggest, you know, innovation I think was the connect. Um, yes. That was actually yes. new. That, that was, you know, that was kind of, that, that's new. I mean, and that as was far as fresh. motion recognition goes, I mean, right. that is far superior to anything Sony or Wii or right. anything right. else is 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 using. I mean, I've right. had multiple people tell me that, and looking at all the different stories and things like that. I mean, yes, Connect is is amazing. Right. Um, right. So yeah, but, yeah you know, so, it's, I'm just not excited about no. much from Microsoft. You know, no, I tell you one thing though that excites me is Wacom. Um, yeah, I, you're a big tablet I am guy. a tablet like babies, fan, huh? right? I'm mm -hmm. a tablet fan. And, you know, they came out with a new tablet called the Splash. And it's it's really cheap. It's like 79 bucks. It has the over a thousand, you know, pressure, whatever it is, sensor or whatever it is. Right. Um, but it's just, if you don't have a it's some type of touchpad right now, which I know, I don't think you have one. No, if I don't. A photographer, I've never used one. I, I mean, mean, with all need... the illustration work and stuff that I've done over the years, I've never, yeah, honestly, I've used to learn my mouse like I would a tablet. I mean, right. I, I have such dexterity with my mouse um, in, in the scroll wheel, you know, uh -huh. that I really don't, um, I, I never saw the need for a tablet, but right. it's for 79 bucks. I mean, it's definitely worth a try. Yeah, seventy nine bucks. You know that the 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 tablet. You know when I looked at it, I'm like, God. You know it has all of the features um, of you know my tablet that I paid three four hundred bucks for. Pretty close. It's mm -hmm. a little bit smaller. It's only six inches by like four inches or so. Right. Um, right. But still, I mean, it's got the great yeah. pressure sensitivity. I mean, you know, just think about a thousand um, levels of pressure you know, sensitivity when you write. So you can imagine how accurate you can be for feathering stuff, feathering brushes and sure. and this type of thing. Um, yep. But, you know, I think it's like riding a bike. You know, you use a tablet for about uh, two days, three days, and then you get used to it. Once you get used to it, it's right. so hard to go back to a mouse because the accuracy in those things are just precise. You can go to an exact spot. You, it's just, and then what's nice too is instead of just having like one button or two buttons or option clicking and all that kind of stuff, um, on the tablet itself, you have different buttons and you can set them to do different things. So if right, you're in Photoshop, cool. like we are as photographers all day long, all, all you time, know, right. yeah, you could set all of these buttons to do all different things and you're in there and you almost never have to touch the keyboard. You could just sit there and work on the tablet. So I tell you what, right. for 79 bucks, if you don't have a, ta a tablet, instead of going with one of the, you know, the cheaper bamboo that, you know, um, like one of these things I've bought for my daughter type of thing, um, Try the splash. The splash looks yeah. really interesting. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. I, 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 you know, I might get one. You know, as it turns out, I write with the opposite hand that I use my mouse with. Right. So I could, I could actually be doing two things at once. <laughs> yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. No, <laughs> I can't even do one thing at a time. <laughs> my, head. my head would explode. So I tell you what, bro. Listen to this. Um, Scott Kelby just recently absolutely floored, flamed took apart a major manufacturer. And um, you know what? I'm gonna tell you about that as soon as we get back from one more sponsor break. So we'll be right back. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. 
Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. So, all right, we're back. So I was kind of alluding to something that just went ha- happen, you know, kind of happened about what, two days ago, three days ago now, um, Scott Kelby, he po- he was basically typing, um, he was posting something. And instead of hitting, um, uh, what is it? Uh, post later draft. or save or <laughs> yeah, draft or whatever, he actually posted it. Yeah, and it he went about, you know, he hit post, he didn't realize that he did it. It went live, then he went and corrected it and went, took it offline. It basically went out there and it turned like nuts. Yeah. And basically what it was, um, he the title of his article is I'm done with Drobo. Yep. And um, I just thought it was such an, I, I'm like, we, we have to talk about this because I know, you know, you're in the Drobo camp. Um, I'm like the Drobo hater and we go back and forth. And when I saw that Kelby was done with Drobo, I'm like, okay. I got to I got to rub this in your face. So <laughs> so uh, so yeah. we were reading through it. it. It's just it's kind of comical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about it quite a bit before we started uh, recording this thing. But it, yeah, basically, you know, the long story short, um, Scott has had uh, several Drobos fail on him, um, not the hard drives themselves, but the hardware, the box. Right. Um, and the problem with the Drobo is it is proprietary. So if you if the box goes, your hard drives basically are useless. Um, you can't do anything with them. Right. Um, he's had multiple hard dro- uh, Drobo boxes um, repaired or replaced. I think it was four. I think four failures. Yeah, four times. Yeah, and he calls them bricks. Four bricks. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere, then they yeah. just yeah they literally become bricks because you can't do anything with them. I mean, you may as well go build a wall with them. Right. Um, they uh, yeah they become useless. And so so with the, so I, I guess where he really got pissed off was you know the last time when he had his data manager guy uh, i forgot what his name is brad or something um call up drobo they basically said yeah you know you're out of warranty we can fix it if you have like the drobo extended warranty and if right. not you know you can buy it and it's only 300 dollars. yeah so it's like are you telling me that you know all of my photos are basically gone and i have access to none of them and they're all they're they're in your proprietary format and i'm now being held ransom for 300 bucks to get up my pictures back right that didn't sit well no no well right. and honestly that doesn't really sit well with me either because the fact even though it is proprietary um he did have backups I mean, he's got a backup of his images at home. He's got a backup of his images with his asset manager over there. The, the, the Drobo that failed was the one in his office. So, you know, I mean, he's, he, his, he's got access to his images. Um, is it convenient? No, it's certainly an inconvenience. Um, my whole feeling, you know, as with Apple, I mean, or with any other manufacturer, they offer a certain time period for their warranty. Um, Apple gives a one year on their computers. If you want the extended Apple care, the extended warranty, you have to pay for it. And right. it's like, you know, 200, 250 bucks, depending on what, you know, what it is that you're buying. Well worth it. Yeah, it's well worth it. Um, Scott did not purchase the extended warranty with the Drobo up front. So he was given the option is 300 bucks a fair price to pay. Eh, I don't know. I mean, considering right. you've got a Mac pro with a connected monitor, um, and you're getting two additional years of protection for like 200 and change, and they want three over 300 for yeah, a product that only cost 500. Yeah, mm-hmm. on a on a unit that costs like five or 600 bucks. Um, I think that is a little excessive. Right. Um, but honestly, with any electronics, um, with any of the backups, my feeling is that the Drobo is still a good solution. The Drobo may be proprietary. Um, It may not allow you to pop the hard drives out and stick it in another box and and then boom, all of a sudden it just starts working. Um, But it's not designed to do that. Um, The whole point to the Drobo is the software management that it uses to maintain your files, to protect your drives. If it detects that a drive is going bad, it gives you the warning. It gives you the ability to replace the drive. Now, Drobo does not protect you from a box failure. Right. Um, and that's where having on-site backup, duplication, redundancy 
of that Drobo is important. Yeah, redundancy to the backup of the backup. See, uh, right. and like you're saying, I mean, Scott has three backups of it, so everything would be, you know, everything's copacetic, I'm sure, with him at this point. The only problem with it is, is possibly he, let's say he did a day's worth of work or two days worth of work or whatever, and his offsite wasn't current to his onsite. Everything that he did is now lost. Okay, so that's that's definitely right. an issue. Yeah, that's um, an issue. Side note would be is let's say if his director or let's say um, um, someone from the newspaper from a magazine says we need photo so and so we need it you know by twelve o'clock and whatever and now the he can't access it at all okay um, he has to go back drive out to his house or have his data manager bring bring the file or or send the files send or the whatever files. Sure. Um, that's problematic um, it I, is. The, it's th the problem that I have with it is this. Um, if, you know, they sell the Drobo as a backup unit, which is true, that's what it is. Right. Um, the problem with it is, is yes, you know, they say if there's a hard drive that's going bad, you know, the light will come on yellow, whatever it says, replace drive two or whatever, pull it out, put another one in and right. it'll go ahead and fix itself. That's fine. But if there's any kind of failure, a circuit board failure, a power supply failure, some type of box failure. Right. Your box turns into a brick immediately and your data is gone. Your data is no longer accessible. It's gone until you have it fixed. The, and, and this is back to the proprietary um, part of this. If they ever go out of business and now that heart, that thing dies in any way, shape or form, your data is not only not accessible for that moment, it's not accessible period forever. There's right. no recovering it. There's no like sending it in to a data recovery team to go and, you know, pull it off a platter that was, you know, scorched in a fire. It's just done. The, right, the, right. the way to read it is it's gone. So, you know, I, and I'm, I'm going to, I will stick by my method of having two or three drives, let's say um, you could either rate them or not rate them, however you want to do it, attached to the computer, either USB 3 or um, Firewire, let's say 800 or Thunderbolt or whatever, however you want to do it, stack them up and then buy a piece of software for 10 bucks off the app store and let it sit there and sync if you need them synced. Right. And that's it. And not allow a system to do the sync. Because now you're just buying two drives and buying a software that's 10 bucks. Remember the Drobo, you, you buy them empty, you're paying like two, 300 bucks just for the, the, the nicety or the, you know, the ability to have it done automatically behind the scenes so that you don't have to do it. I just right. don't think that it's, you know, dollars, it's, I don't think it's worth the money. That's like the well, bottom line. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I see your point. I mean, I'm, I, I think, I think that it is. Right. Um, I like the built-in redundancy of the Drobo unit itself. Um, it is one of the set it and forget it type of devices. I mean, right. I, I guess you got to look at it. Do you want to be an IT guy or do you want to be an artist? Um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're working with, you know, traditional rated drives, you know, and one of those drives goes down, then you're kind of screwed. You know, right. you've got to go in and spend some time being Mr. IT guy, fixing right. it, getting the data, transferring it around and stuff like that. Yeah, I've I, never, I tell you what, I've never been a RAID fan. Never. No. I mean, it's good for speed. If you RAID zero stuff and you want, yeah. you just want to, you want to, you know, um, RAID zero some drives yeah. for speed together to do video or audio. That's yep. fine. Yep. But to do a true RAID array and do it right. When you build that RAID array, guys, if you guys are going to build a RAID box, the key is, is to buy three cards, three RAID cards, the one that's going to go into the box and you take two and you stick them into some lock box somewhere. Put so when that RAID card, <laughs> right. So when that RAID um, card fails, eventually five years down the road. Yeah, your you got your data is not junked. You can yep. take the card, throw in the garbage. You pull that card out now that's five years old, that's never been turned on, plug it in. All of your data is there and yeah. you're good. That's a true way to do a good RAID array and be safe. If you think you're just going to make a RAID array and buy one card and then five, 10 years down the road, your card goes bad and you're looking around to try to far, find a card that's going to be compatible to pull your data off it, you're going to be screwed just like the guy is with the Drobo. This is, it's, right. gonna, it's proprietary. Right. That's why I'm just not a fan. I 
think photographers that don't have that many files, so to speak, they have a ton of like, you know, they have a ton of large files, but you know, when they boil it down to a job and you end up with 15 really, you know, important files, you know, to have this stuff in the background, I, you know, here's an example too. When you're syncing stuff in the background between two drives, every time you make a mistake, that mistake carries over throughout your raid. So if you have two separate um, drives, let's say that you're doing this um, synchronization on, let's say on a nightly basis, you have the whole entire day to say, oh crap, I made a mistake. Go back and pull the good one, the good file off. But if you're constantly rating it and it's constantly, you know, updating, you don't have that ability. You are, you now have a crap file on both backups. Right. See, and that's why I don't do that. I, I agree that the Drobo, I like the Drobo for my primary, right? uh, For my primary storage. Um, But what you need to do on site is you need to back that Drobo up to another drive, something that is not proprietary. Um, now I'm using, I have two Drobos going and I'm using the one Drobo as the primary. I have the second Drobo as the, the backup right. and I'm using time machine to, to do that backup. So, you have so two time Drobos. machine backs it up, um, every hour and it holds, you know, like a week's worth of, you know, every hour backups and then yes. it holds, you know, whatever. Um, however it stores it now. Yes. The second drive is the Drobo and it is proprietary, but I guess you got to look at the odds. Will both you have two. fail at the same time? Right, right. Um, odds are pretty good that says that it won't. Um, is it possible that a hard drive within one of those Drobos will fail? Absolutely. So rather than being a catastrophic failure or or a you know a major um, issue to have a drive go like a single drive go. Um, I'm inconvenienced and I go to Amazon, I order a bulk drive and I get it in two days and, and drop it in and everything's hunky dory. Um, that, that was my personal preference and, and what I wanted to do with the type of files. Now you can do one single drive to one single drive, but if that one single drive does fail as your primary, um, then you're going and you're working off your backup drive. Now you have to order a whole new drive, um, most likely an enclosure. Um, if it is a like a USB standalone drive, um, you're not going to normally get a just a hard drive to put inside it unless it's an enclosure that you can access and, and replace right, it. So, right. you know, so, there. I mean, there's two sides to every story. It's oh, really no, what absolutely. your budget and what you feel comfortable with. All right. So, so just a real quick thirty seconds. What do I do? Just so you, if if someone wants to know, um, I have two large, um, two terabyte striped. RAID 0 G drives, one on top of each other. Um, They're both connected FireWire 800 and whatever is on the first drive ends up on the second drive at the end of the day or sometimes after two days. It just depends on how, what, what the workflow is for the day. And, um, and that's basically it. They're both Stripe Zero, so they're fast as hell. And I can, I actually do video, all of the video that goes on behind the scenes as well as all of the audio right through firewire 800 on these raid zero g drives that's right. my that's my method it works um at the end of the year usually i've filled up the two terabytes um um and that's it and then i'll get two more drives i'll take those two out of the loop and i'll put two more down and then we do the exact same thing all over again yep. so um that's my method g drive also has a four terabyte uh version of that um, and they also, I think, have a six terabyte version of that same type of setup with that right. RAID and that's zero. a lot of storage. It's a ton of storage, I mean, very, very fast, FireWire yeah. 800 or USB uh, 3. So right. that's the way that I would say doing it. But, you know, everyone has their own way. That's the way I do it. I tell you what, there is like a little silver lining here on the on the story. <laughs> you know, basically, after every, everything was said and done, um, Scott gave the CEO a platform to basically write onto the, the blog, onto his blog and put a response out there to everyone. And, um, and he did say that they were making they were, you know, they're making some improvements to the new version of the Drobos. And they're also thinking about extending the warranty from that one year period on out, because that was the major point of contention for Scott 
was that, you know, if you have something that's supposedly backing up my data, um, if I dropped it off the counter or if I dump my, you know, a water on top of it, my fault, my bad, I'm screwed, so to thing, so to speak. But if your thing dies and it sits here and goes junk, 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 on right. off, on right. off, at that point, you know, it should be up to you to just fix the damn thing so I can get my quote unquote data that you told me that is fully backed up. Uh, so redundantly right. and you know with your system um i can get that back and i can get that back in a very at post haste at a very quick um uh, speed i'm not waiting around trying to get my data so right. um you know so we'll see it it, it was it's a good story it kind of just you know to me it just says no matter how you back up back up but you know back to our original point that we talked about a few months uh back was you know proprietary Anything that you're doing proprietary at the back end, you always have to remember that if those people ever leave, they go out of business or something happens, they're, it's just gone. And that doesn't matter if it's Drobo right. or if it's another type of a machine. Whenever you're dealing with something that's proprietary, if it is mission critical, buy two of them. Just like you have two Drobos, same thing. If you're building a RAID yeah. array and you're building it um, on a, in a server in a box and you're putting 12 drives in this big monster server and you have one card, buy three cards. You need them. If not, right. you're going to end up... <laughs> you're yeah, gonna, it's yeah, going to be that be oh definitely. shit moment. And yeah, <laughs> you're going to yeah, be like, now what? You know? and, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, if a company's going to go out, I mean, even if they go out overnight, as long as your unit is still working, um, continue to use it if you want. Pull the data off put as a backup, as possible. Another backup plan to your backup plan in place you know exactly. get get that cop you know get that data copied over to another drive from a manufacturer who didn't go out of business <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there you go so uh yeah anyway it's definitely uh you know sometimes it takes you know a big you know public figure or a bigger uh, presence on sure. the internet like scott to uh you know bring this up to make manufacturers take notice and uh you know, and maybe revise their procedures a little bit. And this is good. I mean, this hopefully will be better for the community. It well. shows the power of the blogosphere. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so anyway, bro, I think we are done. We are out of here. Yeah, so it's a good show. Good information, I think. A lot of a lot of good stuff. Kind of a newsy show this week, but yeah. I, I think still some good points to good information to take away. So uh, yeah. hopefully our listeners uh, got something good out of it and, you know, if you guys want to hear something in particular or or less of a topic that we cover, <laughs> let us know either way. Absolutely. We're listening. <laughs> We're listening. Uh, just head over to digitalphotographycafe.com and uh, send us a message right through the contact form there. Um, or head over to Twitter at DPhotoCafe and send us your comments, your thoughts, your suggestions there. We're always uh, open to uh, information. So Joe, if people want to learn more about what you're up to, how can they find you? All right. They can find me on the website at AllureMM.com. On Twitter, that's at Joseph Christina. And that's Christina without an H. On Facebook, that's Facebook.com forward slash AllureMM. And finally, Google Plus. So you can go to GplusJC.com. Great. And you can keep up with me on Twitter at Trevor Current or our other Twitter account at Current Photo. We're kind of sharing some different information in both accounts now. And uh, also check out our website, of course, currentphotographer.com and facebook.com forward slash current. All right, Trevor, we are out of here. I'd like to thank the listeners for their continued support. If you enjoy the show, we encourage you to subscribe for free in iTunes or via RSS to have them del delivered directly to your computer automatically. If you're listening on the go, fear not. Everything that we covered in this week's show can easily be found in our show notes at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com. Once again, keep your questions and comments coming, and we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>